Hi, I'm Tony Mejia. If you're new, a life, we're still trying to figure all of this out. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Have you ever forgotten your age before? Or maybe the date or the time, some special event? Well, I received a phone call while I was driving. I had to pick it up because it was one of my old buddies and we're just chatting back and forth. And all of a sudden he said that the other day he forgot his age. And I was thinking, you are pretty immature. And that's kind of the conversation we're going back and forth, just joking. He's like, you've never forgotten your age before? I'm like, no, I know how old I am. I am 30 years old. And all of a sudden it was quiet. And he's like, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. Like, no, you're not. Yes, I am. It kind of shows our maturity level at that point. But we're going back and forth. And he's like, when is your birthday? I said, January 5th, 1989. I'm 30. He's like, no, you're 31. And I'm like, all right, let's just switch gears. And we started talking, joking around. Next thing you know, we hung up. And then I had a burning desire. I have to know how old I am. So I'm going to trust Siri. So I said, Siri, how old am I? And she said, you're 31. In that moment, you know, my life flashed before my eyes. I couldn't believe that I've lived 11,686 days here on earth. Isn't that amazing? Time truly flies and don't we find that out? Like last year, we couldn't wait till time would just fly right by. And here we are in the new year. And what's this new year going to bring? We don't know, do we? So how do we enjoy this upcoming year. I'm so glad that you asked. And we're going to go to the tried and true Psalm 90, which is the oldest psalm written by Moses. Moses, guy who lived for a long time, a long time ago. Moses, he had personal struggles. He had many challenges that he faced. And he was surrounded by people who were complainers, who grumbled a lot, and who wouldn't do what it would take to get out of the mess that they were in. So he was in a tough situation. And he asked God for something in Psalm 90, verse 12. And this is how it reads. It's our main verse. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. I don't know about you, but I like to learn on my own time, my own way, at my own speed. But that's not what Moses is asking. Moses is asking for God to teach him to number his days and to get a heart of wisdom. Because our lives are short, aren't they? Time flies by and we experience that over and over again. And we wait on things that God hasn't even promised or spoken. And we wait on these things. And usually it causes us heartbreak. We find out it's wishful thinking. Or we're just waiting on something else. But God has another way. We learn that counting time isn't the same as making time count. See, my son was so excited about Christmas. He wanted to open up the presents. And we said, not until Christmas Day. And he kept saying, is it Christmas yet? Is it Christmas yet? Daddy, it's Christmas. That's what he started. He started declaring things. Like, it is Christmas. We'd, you know, enjoy the nativity. We'd go see lights. And every moment, it's Christmas. Like, no, you got to wait. It's not Christmas yet. So he had to learn how to enjoy the season and enjoy the moment and day and it was hard for him it's hard for a lot of us to enjoy the season and the time and the day as we're waiting on something but God has created us to make our time count even if it's short so normally what we do is go verse by verse but today I'm just going to refer to Psalm 90 and you're going to see it somewhere on the screen. And so you can read it later. But we're going to look at a quick look 
at Moses' desire and things that we can pray so that we can make our time count this year and each and every day. So let's jump in. So in Psalm 90, verse 1 to 11, he begins by saying that God is their dwelling place. God is their home and it has been their home for generation after generation. And that is true for you and I too. He can be our home where we can grow and be shaped, to be challenged and become the people that he's created us to be. It's our safe place, but it's hard to learn. And just like having different people in our homes, other people are in different time frames. So sometimes you think that God is a little preoccupied. You might have thought that God has been preoccupied or maybe he has too much time that you're not sure that you're even going to be able to see what he is doing. It's like, God, you have maybe too much time. I don't feel like I have too much time. So he comes down to that very main verse. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. So the first thing that we can pray is this. God, teach me to live well and wisely. God, teach me to live well. Teach me to live wisely. Teach me how to live here and now. Teach me to live the abundant life. Give me a heart, God, of wisdom. So my mind is not filled with things that are fleeting, filled with things that don't matter, filled with things that are just going to drag me down. But that I would have a heart of wisdom to know how to enjoy what you've called me to enjoy and to experience. That is a big prayer to pray. But that will help us to make our time count throughout this year and each and every day. Moses is not done. Moses asked for this, but he also has requests and hopes for God. Anybody else? Anyone else have some requests and hopes? And this is very important to give over to God. Because asking God and giving that to him is the cares of our heart, of our mind, our soul, and our entire being. And it really helps us. It really does. It brings us to a place where we can pray this prayer. God, keep me together. God, keep me together. My culture is very different from my wife's culture, especially when it comes down to eating. With her Everyone has, you know, placemat, fork, knife, cup, you know, you pour it into a cup, you know, tablecloths. It's very nice. I've come to love it. My family, my culture, here's your food. God gave you utensils through your hands and fingers. Enjoy. So there's these things called tostadas and they are delicious. Imagine a nacho chip with everything you enjoy about tacos on top of it. It is so fragile that it breaks when you bite it, but it is so good. And my wife said to me that it took her a long time to actually just enjoy and eat it in front of my family because you know, you kinda, she said, you make some ugly faces as you open it up, you open up and it falls and you're licking it off your fingers. You kind of have to have some relational value and respect beforehand. See, life is very fragile and it's very good. But life, we notice, can fall apart, especially in such a short time frame. And we need to have some relational value with God where we can trust him. And say, God, keep me together. God, right now, it's very tough. I'm trying to move forward. I'm trying to enjoy the season. I'm trying to enjoy life. I'm trying to enjoy the day. God, keep me together. I'm telling you, you trust God. He will keep you together. Thing is, Moses is not done. 90 verse 14. He asked for something specifically. And this is what he asked. He said, God, may I have godly satisfaction at the beginning of the day? You can read that 
throughout. He said, maybe we have joy in our lives first thing in the morning. And that is for us too. Where we can ask God, God, may I start satisfied in you. My family knows when I don't pray. Why? Because I'm not satisfied with who I am, what's happening, uh, grumpy and stuff. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be grumpy after you pray this prayer. But it changes us. Being satisfied in God is where you are okay with everything around you, knowing that God is the center of your life. Where you are satisfied because you know that God is not done. He's doing a work all around you and you live in peace. Praying God, may I start satisfied in you will help you so that you're not um, running around trying to do things. But you are resting in him and trusting in him. This is a huge prayer. I don't even know if Moses knew how important this would be for him. I don't think that we know how important this is for us too. Because it'll help us to make our time count this year and each and every day. Moses isn't done. Moses knew that he was going to have trouble and a lot of things going on. But he also knew that God would surprise them and make up for the bad times. That he would provide for his children. And that's for us too. See, Moses asked for God's best. And for God's blessing as he trusts God who does his best and he does bless. And that is for us too, where we can pray this prayer. God, your best and your blessing is more than enough for me. I uh, took my children to this outdoor program where we we're going to make tie dye shirts I've never made a tie-dye shirt, so I didn't know what to expect. I just brought the white shirts with me. And all I said was, you know, I'm going to do my best. And my son says to me, Daddy, try your best. All of a sudden, I felt this pressure. I'm like, man, this better turn out. So we answer the questions. We follow the instructions. And, you know, they had to sit for a certain amount of time. So they had to go and take a nap while the shirt was in the sun or something like that. So I went and pulled it out and I was really excited. And I wanna show you how these tie-dye shirts turned out. That's it right here. It looks very tie-dye, doesn't it? The back is a little bit better. And all I felt was, oh no, they're gonna be so disappointed. Oh, if I have to wake them up. So I wake them up and I give them these tie-dye shirts and they are so excited they're putting it on they're wearing it and they couldn't believe it here's the thing god doesn't feel the pressure of us wanting stuff god truly gives us his best and his blessings and sometimes it's not what we want but god always gives us what we need and that is something that we need to be reminded and remember. That God is giving his best and his blessing. And it's because it's the things that we need. And it's more than enough for us for that day. So that we can live and make the day count. God does give his best and his blessing. And it's more than enough. Moses isn't done. He continues in verse 17. He knows that life is short and there's this time frame, but there's a lot of work in between all of that. Not only do we have work, God has a lot of work because I'm a lot of work. You may be a lot of work. God has a lot of work in between. And what he does is God leads us and empowers us to live it out. And that's for us too, where we pray this prayer, God May your work and my work be the same work. See, so work now for us may be very different, may be very difficult. So what differs between our work and his work? The way we find out 
that we are doing the same work is when we come to a place where he is the strength and source of our joy. Where we have joy, not because work is going well, not because, you know, you are working our dream job or a dead end job. Is that God has us in a certain place, in a certain time, and he's the strength that we have and need. He is the source of joy that we have and we need. And he leads and guides our lives and he empowers us. And sometimes it's very different. It's very difficult. So he is the strength and he is the source of our joy where we pray, God, may your work and my work be the same work. Now I want to quickly go back to our main psalm, Psalm 90, verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. To number our days, we can take that very negative. We think, man, life's short. What, what's going on? It's kind of meaningless. If we number our days, are we really like, you know, should we even say Happy New Year? Because we don't even know if we're going to make it. And that's not how God's approaching this. God does work in years. But numbering our days is where we learn that it's not just Happy New Year. It's Happy New Day. This is the day. This is the new day that God has specifically given to you so that you would get a heart of wisdom. Where we pray prayers like, God, teach me to live well and wisely. God, keep me together. God, may I start satisfying you, God, your best and blessing is more than enough for me. And God, may your work and my work be the same work where we come to a place where wisdom will help you to live the abundant life and live it now where we pray this prayer. God, teach me to appreciate life. God, teach me to appreciate life. When uh, I was younger, I always thought, for some reason, I had this thought in my mind that I was going to die really young. So I had all these thoughts in my mind. I need to get on those dating shows because I have to find the love of my life because, you know, I don't really have that much time. And I had all these thoughts and things. And you know what? They were lies. These lies that I lived by. And it caused a lot of heartache, depression, and suicide thoughts. Until Jesus entered my life. Jesus showed me how to appreciate life. Knowing that life is short. But in between the short amount of time that I am here, he has the abundant life. He has a plan and purpose where I don't have to have it all together. But he's the one who holds my life and he teaches us this where we can have joy, where we can have hope, where we can live in the love of God. And it's so important for us to be taught by God to appreciate life. Because counting time isn't the same as making time count. Our days are numbered. Our years go by really quick. But God teaches us to appreciate life. I just want to leave you with one final verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. But I encourage you to read verses 7 to 18. And this is how it reads, verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Paul, he struggled. He worked really hard and he trusts God, even though he had persecution, he, he had a lot of pressure and punishment that he went through. He kept trusting God, but there was some whispers. Man, is he doing this all in vain? Like, shouldn't he just call it quits? He really lived life. He's like, no, I will not lose heart. Even though our outward self is wasting away, he says, yet the inward self is being renewed day by 
day, even though our time is short, even though our days are numbered, we are renewed day by day. We are getting more hope day by day. We get more joy day by day because it's God who's in our lives, who teaches us to appreciate life, to appreciate the season, to appreciate the day. He teaches us to number our days so that we can enjoy that moment, that time with him. Not only thinking about the future, but enjoying what God has. And when we struggle through those days, there are prayers that we can pray. God, keep us together. God, may I be, start satisfied in you. May your best and your blessing be more than enough for me. May your work and my work be the same work where we pray, God, may we appreciate life and life today. Where this new day is the day that God has given us. And as we go through it, as we enjoy it, we just do it by praying and trusting and allowing God to be God in our lives. We don't know what the next year brings, but we know that we are broken vessels, jars of clay. Time is short, but our lives are full. And that's the way God intended us. So may each day of the new year, may you call out to God and allow him to show you the abundant life.